But if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to turn to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to be reading out of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. If you don't, we will throw the scriptures up for you. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Uh, but it says this in verse 15. It says, be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Verse 17, it says, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Yeah. And this morning, this, this afternoon, uh, I have a message that comes from the end time series that we just finished up here at our, our church. If you weren't here these past couple of Sundays or this past month, uh, we just finished up with the uh, end time series. And uh, we talked about basically about how Jesus is coming back soon Amen. and how near the second coming is. Amen. Amen. And uh, during this end time series, as Pastor Dan and Pastor Ben were, were preaching, uh, one thing that just rang so loud in my head and, and uh, just rang so loud in my ears was the fact that uh, we needed to be ready and get ready for a second coming and to tell others to get ready ASAP because his coming is right around the corner. Amen. And uh, we need to get off our rear ends and, and we need to get up and do something, but not just do anything, but uh, what God has specifically designated and called each of you to do. Amen? Amen. And uh, it wasn't necessarily the fact that, uh, or just the fact that Jesus was coming back soon, but what really stood out to me was the fact that we didn't have much time left. Amen. That there was no time to waste. And uh, this just rang so loud in my in my mind. Every Sunday I came, this was just ringing in my head. And, and Jesus, I feel like Jesus was just yelling me, yelling me down and telling me, hey, you know, we must make every day count. Uh, for something, and we have to make every day uh, just worth something, amen? amen. And uh, these thoughts, man, these thoughts changed my perspective. Uh, it changed my life. It changed uh, who I am entirely, man. I've been changed, and uh, it, it's just been an awesome ride. And, and uh, so that's what I wanted to talk about this this morning, this afternoon. Um, the title of my message is Call of Duty. Call of Duty it has nothing to do with the video game. But call of duty, amen? amen? Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you this morning, this afternoon, God. We're just here to hear from you, God. And I pray and ask that you use me as your vessel, as your mouthpiece, to clearly and concisely get across your word to your people. Help us receive all that you have for us to hear, to see. I pray that this word will uh, be deeply rooted in our hearts, God, and we will leave this place not the same but changed by your glory, changed by your word. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. So the reason why I titled this message Call of Duty uh, was simply because I felt like God was calling me. And uh, during the end time series, I just felt like God was just, uh, just calling me and he was just yelling out to me. And the word call, if you look it up in the dictionary, the word call means to cry or a cry to get somebody's attention. Amen. And uh, that's what I felt like God was doing. He was crying, uh, calling me to get my attention. And then the word duty, somebody say duty. Duty. The word duty means responsibility or obligation. So it was like God's cry to get my attention of my responsibility as a believer. And I feel like that's what God wanted to speak to us uh, this afternoon. And um, so God gave me this passage of scripture here in Ephesians chapter five, uh, just to see exactly uh, what I needed to see uh, to do and in, uh, in response to this call of duty, amen? amen. And uh, I just have a few, few things this morning that I wanna share with you. I have 113 points, but I'm gonna share only three. <laughs> Unless uh, you guys want to hear all 130 no, I'm playing. Uh, but so this scripture, through these scriptures, God gave me uh, three calls to action uh, that we as, as believers must take. And so the first call is found in uh, verse 15 in our a scripture we read earlier, Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 15, it says, be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, 
but like those who are wise. And our first call, our, our first call to action, God was reminding me, and he's reminding us to, this morning to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Say, will we check yourself before you wreck yourself, amen? And what I mean by this is real simple, is we have to examine our current living situations. We have to step away from our busy lives and take a look at our lives and we have to ask ourselves, is everything I'm doing in my life bringing God glory? If not, what are we gonna to do to change it? Uh, what changes do I need to make? Because the Bible clearly says right here, it says uh, to be careful how you live, right? That's what it says right here. It says, be careful how you live. This is not my words. This is the Bible. It says, be careful how you live. So this obviously means what? There's obviously a way to live carelessly, right? Without care, uh, loosely, right? And so I was asking God when I was studying and stuff, and I said, God, show me an illustration or show me, show me something uh, just uh, about a, a story of somebody living loosely. And God gave me the story of, of Samson and Delilah. How many of you guys know or ever heard of the story of Samson and Delilah? Amen. Just two people? Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to just go over the story of Samson and Delilah real quick. Uh, but God was just showing me how Samson, even though he had a call on his life, he started be, to begin uh, to live a life without care. He started to live his life real loosely. And I'm going to show you right here in, uh, through the scriptures. But uh, the story of Samson is found in Judges chapter 16. If you have time, go read it. It actually starts in verse uh, six, chapter 16 or chapter 13, sorry. Uh, but if you know Samson, Samson was a Nazarite. Somebody say Nazarite. Yeah. He was a Nazarite from birth. And uh, what Nazarite means is simply a, a person who was set apart uh, to serve God. And uh, Samson was set apart to serve God. Uh, he was set apart to be used by God before he was even born. And uh, God blessed Samson and he gave Samson superhuman what? Strength, right? Uh, through the power of his Holy Spirit, all Samson had to do, he had to do three certain things, because uh, a Nazarite has to do three things. I'm only going to give you one, so if you want to know the other two, you got to go back uh, after service and read Judges. But the one main thing that he had to do was to never let a blade touch his head. Never to cut his hair, right? This is all Samson had to do. And uh, so the Bible tells us uh, one day Samson was tied up. He was given over to the Philistines. And the Philistines, they were the enemy of Samson. They were the enemy of, uh, of his people, the enemy of God. And uh, God's spirit came upon Samson. And uh, he, he rose up, he broke whatever was holding him. And uh, with the jawbone of a donkey, he killed a thousand Philistine men. And then after he killed, uh, anybody ever seen the jawbone of a, of a donkey? No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a picture of it, but I'm pretty sure it's just, you know, something small. But he killed a thousand people, a thousand dudes with just the jawbone of a donkey with the, with the strength of God. Amen? Amen. And after he killed those, uh, those a thousand men, uh, I could see how he was, he's probably a little tired, right? It's a lot of people. And so he killed a thousand <laughs> people. He was probably a little tired. But uh, I don't know. For me, I just feel like Samson was a little bit. He was probably a little of a drama queen because next thing after, right after he was like, God, he cried out to God and he said, God, I did all of this and now I'm going to die because I'm thirsty. <laughs> this is Samson, this is real. You can read it in the Bible. He said, God, I'm going to die because I'm thirsty. All he had to do was walk over. The water bottle is right there. He was, <laughs> right? Uh, but God being God, amen? Yeah, amen. God caused water to come out of a rock. So God, uh, so Samson was sitting there with a rock in his hand, and he was having a drink, and everybody was like, what is this guy doing, right? And even after God did all of these amazing things, the yeah. spirit came upon him, he got up, he broke whatever was holding him down, grabbed, I don't know where he got the jawbone of a donkey <laughs> from, but he killed a thousand dudes, right? And then he caused water to come out of a rock, and even after God did all of these amazing things, wow. it, right in front of Samson, even through Samson, he started to live without care. He started to live loosely. And he started taking for granted the gift that God gave him. He took, he took for granted who he was. Amen. And I'm talking about check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Next thing you know, in the Bible, the story goes on. 
And uh, Sam said he started hanging out where he shouldn't have been. The Bible says uh, that he went to spend a night in Gaza, which was a town in, in, in Philistine, which were his enemies, right? And uh, so he was in enemy territory. He was somewhere he shouldn't have been. And um, after that, it says that he spent the night with a prostitute. So we can see that he's not only in enemy territory, he's, he's somewhere he shouldn't have been, where he, he shouldn't have been. Then he's now he's uh, spending time with people he shouldn't have been spending time with, Amen. right? And, and we can see that although Samson had a call on on his life from the day of his birth, wow. yeah. that he was beginning to live without care. He was beginning to live loosely, right? He wasn't checking himself. He was just all over Facebook doing all kinds of crazy stuff, to tweeting about this, tweeting about that, posting about this, talking this certain way, cutting people off on the freeway. He's just starting to live loosely. And he was like, well, I don't care what people think. I'm just gonna live. I don't care if I have a call of God in my life. And he was living well, loosely. I'm talking about check yourself before you right. wreck yourself, amen? amen. And uh, after this night, the Bible goes on and he talks about how he fell in lust, not in love. He fell in lust because he's seen this woman he said, I want that woman. And he fell in lust with this woman named Delilah. You guys know her? Amen. Uh, and uh, so now he's not only in, t in enemy territory, but now he's pursuing his own desires. He's pursuing a woman uh, not of God. And uh, the story is not that great, right? It's, it's kind of going downhill, <laughs> but it gets worse. I don't know how it can, but it gets worse. Uh, the Bible says that he begins to spend more time with this woman rather than spending time with God. Amen. And I'm talking about what? Check, Check yourself, yourself before, before you, you wreck, wreck yourself, yourself, right? So he's spending time with this woman and the uh, the Philistines, his enemy, they want to kill him. They want to kill Samson because Samson's beating everybody up. He's a big bully around town. He's beating everybody. They're like, we got to get this guy. I'm tired of this dude. So they find out that Delilah is hanging out with Samson. So they approach her and they say, hey, we'll give you 1,100 pieces of silver if you figure out where he gets his strength from, right? So they can kill him. So they're plotting. They've got to get this guy, man. Just trying to set him up. So Delilah asks him. She asks him day after day, day after day. And three times. Somebody say three times. Three times. Three times he lies to her. Three times he lies to her. And he, uh, I, I'm not going to tell you what he said, but three, you go look it up. In Judges 16, but th the, all three times he lied to her, the Philistines came in right after he lied to her, and they tried to kill him. And every single time he got up, broke whatever was holding him, and then he sauced some cats, right? That's what he did. I read it, I'm not lying. Right? And then uh, this lady was, she was, a, she was a faithful lady, man. She was constantly nagging this dude. Nagging him, nagging him, hey, where do you get your strength from? And she did so much that, that uh, Samson just got tired and he said, you know what? I'm going to tell her everything. He, he told her his, his heart. He told him everything. And he said to her, all you have to do is cut off my hair because the blade has never touched my head and my strength will leave me. The Bible goes on to say that he fell asleep on her lap and that uh, she called for the Philistines and they cut off the seven locks off his head and then they came in to kill him. And when he, when he woke up, he thought to himself, I'm just going to get up, break everything off, sauce all these cats, take them to prison, right? Anybody with me? <laughs> right? And But when he got up, he didn't realize that God had left him. Wow. He got up not knowing. He got up like, I got this. I'm going to break this off, do this. But he got up not realizing that God had gone from him. Wow. So he got up, and he had no strength. And uh, the Philistines came in. They didn't kill him, but they gouged out his eyes. Uh, they sent him to a prison to work. And later on, the story goes, uh, Samson ends up killing everybody. Uh, but at the same time, he takes his own life, all because he didn't check himself before he wrecked himself, right? Yeah. And uh, my point in bringing this whole story, it's a long story, but uh, my whole point in bringing this story to light is God showing us that we, we're not just to live any old way. God is reminding us to examine our lives and the way we live them, right? And if it's not what God wants you to do, we have to change it, right? And uh, this morning, God is challenging us to 
check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Amen?